Welcome to another edition of Metaphysics of the Gods, where we discuss issues and topics relating to metaphysics, astrology and astrotheology. Here we delve into the dark recesses of hidden knowledge in an attempt to draw out the truth which has been suppressed and distorted by a sinister hidden hand over centuries of control and manipulation. Metaphysics and astrology are the foundations to understanding universal consciousness. 360 degrees of holistic wisdom as opposed to one degree of compartmentalized academic knowledge. Saturn is the sixth planet from the Sun and the second largest after Jupiter a gaseous giant nine times bigger than the Earth, comprising mainly of hydrogen and helium. It has 62 moons and a visible ring system made up of ice particles. Together Jupiter and Saturn account for 92% of the total planetary mass in our solar system. At a distance of 1.4 billion kilometers away it takes 29 and a half years for Saturn to complete one orbit around the Sun. Observations made by the Voyager mission back in 1981 found a hexagonal shaped cloud pattern at Saturn's North Pole. The pattern is very unusual and distinct. Larger than the diameter of the Earth, it does not shift or deviate from its six-sided appearance. Maybe this is one of the reasons why Saturn is associated with the number six and the black cube. Saturn is the Roman name for the Greek Titan god Cronus. Being the furthest planet out with the longest orbit, he was also known as Father Time and the Grim Reaper. In mythology, Kronos was the ruling titan after castrating and stealing power from his father Uranus. With his wife Rhea, Kronos produced offspring which became the first Olympians. The legend states that Kronos, worried about his rule, decided to eat each of Rhea's children as they were born. Angry at this, Rhea tricked Kronos into swallowing a rock, thinking it was one of her offspring, Zeus. When Zeus grew up, he rebelled against Kronos and the other Titans, banishing them to the underworld. Kronos eventually escaped and settled in Italy, where he ruled as Saturn. Consequently, each year, on December the 17th, a week-long festival was held to honor Saturn. The festival, much like our Christmas, was called Saturnalia. Saturn in astrology is the cross over the crescent, the physical over the spiritual realm. Saturn rules materialism and all things of an earthly nature. Over time, the physical manifestation of the physical soul degenerates and eventually reverts back to its spiritual form, hence the crescent-shaped sickle in the reaper's hand. Just as we have a triad of consciousness, so do the planets. 
they have a physical focal construct along with a spiritual subconscious connection to greater and higher levels of universal awareness, the Logos. The angle of Saturn in a physical sense relative to other bodies is its angle of arc or archangel. The name given to Saturn's archangel is Cassiel, while the sun and moon's angels are known as Michael and Gabriel. During the pharaonic period in ancient Egypt, the angle of the sun was referred to as Horus. When broken down into divisions, we find Horus 1 at sunrise, Horus 2 an hour later, and so on. The word Ark in Egyptian signifies a circle or to encircle, while the angle of Saturn is known as Cassiel. Its focal and subconscious personified characters are referred to as Agael and Zazel. The spectrum of energetic characteristics emanating from Saturn on a metaphysical and astrological level are to do with order and control. They are as follows. Order, control, organization, structure, restriction, constraint, limitation, commitment, frustration, pessimism, self-discipline, and materialism, time constraints, responsibility, commanders to get to work and to work hard, governs time from birth to death, sense of tradition and conventionality, perseverance and withstanding the test of time, senior status brings authority and respect, father figures and authority, regulation, old age and maturity, serious, sombre and cynicism, history and the past and austerity. Saturn's influence helps us grow in the physical world of time restraints and materialism. It is the teacher of self-control and discipline. In a person's birth chart, Saturn's position within the signs and houses denote areas of limitation, control, loss, frustration and failure. The chart also reveals harmonious or conflicting angles between Saturn and the other planets. It is a masculine energy associated with Capricorn and Aquarius. It rules the skin, the hair, teeth, bones and joints, the body's defences, the spleen, the knees, the shins and ankles, and also the circulatory system. Saturn rules over stones, rocks, metals, minerals, lead, dust, ash and rubbish. It also has dominion over jobs which utilise the Earth's minerals, along with all underground work. Being the furthest planet from the Sun in ancient astrology, it is considered as the greater malefic, capable of causing harm or destruction. The lack of the Sun's energy gives Saturn rulership over dark, cold, damp and oppressive conditions, antipathetic to growth and healthy development. While the Sun in Leo rules the summer, Saturn in Capricorn and Aquarius is lord over the winter months. Saturn's characteristics call for restriction, loss, sacrifice and denial towards our hopes, dreams and expectations. Instead, offering us control, order, self-discipline and a traditional approach to our spiritual destiny. It is the voice of authority in the workplace. Expressions of denial and restrictions. Anyone who follows rules blindly at the expense of common sense and decency are siding with Saturn. It also reflects anyone who takes on a responsible role or those who need to keep order, like the police. Illnesses under the domain of Saturn 
are all those depressing winter ailments of colds and flus and progressive deterioration of chronic Kronos diseases which slowly waste a person away over time. Anything concerning bones and joints, together with skin disorders and depression, fall under Saturn's melancholic sphere. The orbit of Saturn is 29 and a half years, creating conflicting transits every seven years. During this time, one can expect to see Saturnian changes, a loss or sacrifice of some kind. Seven years, square transit. It is the end of subconscious programming where our baby teeth fall out. 14 years, opposite transit, loss of childhood, the beginning of puberty. 21 years, square transit, loss of adolescence, the beginning of adulthood. 29 years, Saturn's return. 30 is considered the moment of truth and loss of naivety. The placement of Saturn in a person's natal chart is very important because it is the great malefic. Generally its position in the signs and houses reflect their limitations, fears and sense of responsibility. Not all the characteristics of Saturn are bad. Structure and discipline are very important if one is to succeed in the modern materialistic world. Without reasonable order and good organization skills, an individual can end up aimlessly flitting from one thing to another, achieving very little over the course of their lives. Any rigid system of control and order is Saturnian in nature. Most government organizations and corporations must have a great deal of Saturnian influence to function within the constraints and boundaries of their rules and regulations. People with too much of a Saturnian disposition can come across as too serious, grim or lacking in humour. Saturn can help us achieve our goals in life by stimulating us to put in the time and effort. The attributes of the teacher and old father time can promote success, especially in organising our environment and the material world. As we have already briefly discussed, Saturn is commonly depicted as a black cube, also as a six-pointed star. The most important holy day of the week for the Jewish faith is Saturday, the Sabbath, Saturn's day. The number six is found in many of their myths, writings and history. Saturn is represented as a six-pointed star or a hexagon. Six-day war in the 1960s. Exodus, 600,000 men. Israel has six letters. Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the waters fell onto the earth. Six million Jews died in the Holocaust. Siege of Jerusalem in 1099. 60,000 people were massacred, 6,000 Jews. Exodus 5, and he took 600 chosen chariots. Exodus 6, and it shall come to pass on the sixth day that thy shall prepare that which thy bring in. Exodus 7, six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. If thy buy a Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve. Exodus 9 And six years thou shalt sow thy land, and gather in the increase thereof. By concentrating the focal mind on a single planet, 
a person's consciousness becomes isolated, submerged within the energetic characteristics of that planet alone. They consequently miss out on a balanced spectrum of energies offered by all the planets within our solar system. It is like being brought up by a one-parent family. Your subconscious programming and beliefs will predominantly reflect the characteristics of the planet you are worshipping. Because Judaism has chosen Saturn as their planet of influence, serious devout Jews will benefit from the planet's positive aspects of control, organization, tradition, self-discipline and hard work. However, they will also be influenced by its negative traits such as restriction, pessimism, distance, frustration, cold and seriousness. These Saturnian characteristics will eventually manifest in the physical realm and everyday lives of the Jews as a collective. It is therefore understandable to see Judaism expressing itself as the smallest of all the religions with Christian Jupiter worship the planet of expansion, becoming the largest and most expansive religion on earth. It is also no surprise to see Jews excel in the modern world of materialism, in a society where the cross over the crescent is gradually overtaking the crescent over the cross. The natural Saturnian skills of control, order, organization and structure will give any group already aligned with Saturn the upper hand in this modern materialistic world. Being only a small percentage of the overall population, Jews have done remarkably well to position themselves in large numbers at the very top end of society and in influential positions of power within important institutions, structures and organizations of control. But if you understand the true nature of reality, the law of attraction and how planetary energetic vibrations influence our biology, together with the way we perceive the world around us, this should come as no surprise. Since the dawn of man, there has been rivalry between opposites. For example, day and night, good and evil, truth and falsity. The greater the level of human consciousness, the more variations and complications to this basic principle are created. The most dynamic of all opposites to influence humanity over the past 2,000 years has been the battle between Jesus and Satan, with many people still under the illusion that these two characters are in some way physical manifestations of good and evil. The truth is far more simple than the traditional fables offered down from one generation to the next. Jesus and Satan are personifications of Jupiter and Saturn, optimism and pessimism, the crescent over the cross versus the cross over the crescent. It is spirituality versus materialism or good versus evil. The list of opposing factions concerning opposites is impressive but can distract from the simplicity of truth. It is important to point out the houses associated with both Jupiter and Saturn, when trying to piece together the astrological forces at play concerning the modern world. Jupiter rules both Pisces and Sagittarius, the signs of I believe and I seek, the ninth house of travel, higher learning, religion and philosophy, and the twelfth house of karma 
and the subconscious. Saturn, on the other hand, rules Capricorn, I use, and Aquarius, I know. The tenth house of Korea and the eleventh house of groups and friends. This is important when trying to understand the differences between Jupiterian Christianity and Saturnian Judaism. Christianity has always been associated with seeking philosophical answers, higher learning, belief and spiritual wisdom, while Judaism has been associated with Capricorn's I use, usury, career, business and hard work. They are also synonymous with Aquarian groups and friends, i.e. friends of Israel. It is also important to point out that Saturn is ruler over the material realm as opposed to Jupiter or Jesus ruling the spiritual realm. Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. John 18.36 Satan, who is the god of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. As we move further away from the age of Pisces, materialism will take over from the crescent of spirituality. Saturn will take over from Jupiter and we will no doubt see the Messiah of the old age being replaced by a new one, an individual who represents all the characteristics of Aquarius, the water bearer. These cosmic energy changes which have already begun could be responsible for the rise of the Vatican II the recent abdication of the Pope and the speculation of the last and final Pope to occupy the throne of Peter. It will also become clear that Jesus, the personification of Jupiter Zeus, will only be with us till the end of the Piscean Age. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Matthew 28, 19, 20. So of Aquarius is the age of knowing. Traditional astrologers considered the whole age, all 2150 years, 
to belong to Saturn, but recent astrologers since the rediscovery of Uranus have placed the daddy of Saturn as the ruler for the first half, 1,000 years of this epoch. This makes for a very interesting contrast of planetary energies influencing humanity. While the controlling elite, predominantly aligned with Saturn, are expanding their restrictive Saturnian control grid, Uranus, the planet of rebellion, revolution and unpredictability, will be pouring out cosmic frequencies over the human consciousness. Energetic vibrations of freedom, new technology and a need to break with tradition will certainly lead to interesting times. The Saturnian control system, which comprises of anyone who has a vested interest in Saturn and those aligned with Saturn's energies, include people with strong natural Saturnian karmic dispositions, practicing traditional Judaism, Saturn-worshipping cults and Satanists, organizations of control, corporations or rigid organized institutions, traditional structures of control within the establishment. All these players will work together, using all the latest technology, tightening the straps on humanity's straitjacket, preventing any outbreak of Uranus energy from threatening the stranglehold of the globalization, Saturnization project. There is much speculation about the Antichrist and when he is likely to make an appearance, with many people believing that he will manifest in physical form as a sheep in wolves' clothes. For every new political leader there are many deluded minds conditioned into believing that their new president or minister is the long-awaited one who will use their special powers to steer humanity on a collision course with Hades. From an astrological perspective, there is a substitute Christ in the form of Uranus and an Antichrist in the form of Saturn. Uranus is similar to Jupiter and opposes Saturn in many ways. However, while Saturn is traditional and preoccupied with the past, Uranus' energy is anti-traditional revolutionary and forward-looking. Some of Uranus's characteristics include rebellious, revolutionary, out of the blue, forward-looking, breaking with tradition, individuality, new technology, progressive, novelty, enlightenment, irresponsible, intuitive and freedom. The energetic characteristics of Uranus are very much opposed to Saturn's sturdy restrictive pessimism and because of this many believe the rulership of Uranus could be regarded as the second coming of Christ. As Saturn is most certainly the Antichrist with all the opposing qualifications necessary the antidote to this Antichrist could very well be Uranus as the second coming in a new but different form of optimism and freedom. The real second coming of Jupiter will eventually return as ruler over the age of Sagittarius, but this will not happen for another 4,300 years. Usury, the most powerful of all forms of control, is dominated by offshoots of the Jewish establishment. Aligned with the energetic characteristics of Saturn, through the practice of traditional Judaism, they naturally excel in Saturnian qualities of control, restriction, organization and materialism. Their tremendous wealth and power really came into prominence when Saturn ruled the outer wheel of the Piscean Age. This Saturnian influence propelled them forward in so many ways. After the Lutheran Protestant movement 
in the 15th century had rejected the Holy Roman Empire, it subsequently paved the way for the expansion of usury, especially among the aristocracy of Europe and England. Henry VIII, deep in debt, finally allowed usury back into England. Up to this time, the Muslims and Roman Catholics had resisted usury, viewing it as a great sin. The Jewish goldsmiths had limited markets available, but after the Protestants rejected Catholicism, the Jews and Protestants joined forces with a common enemy. Freemasonry sprang up, incorporating both Jews and Protestants as a secret intellectual army to promote anti-Catholicism and Saturnian qualities. Mammon was to be promoted, materialism over spirituality, the cross was to dominate the crescent in a new joint venture between factions working towards the globalization or Saturnization of humanity. Today the Saturnian control structure is well established. They have control of the banking system, a Saturnian debt-based monetary Ponzi scheme which is owned by a few wealthy private individuals. They have control of most political parties through sponsorship, lobbying, bribery and corruption and by promoting only those politicians who serve their interests. They control the media, education, most multinational corporations, the pharmaceutical cartel, the military industrial complex and most secret societies, infesting every nook and cranny of human activity. We are moving into a new level of control. New technology will be seen by most as a progressive move into the information age, while the Saturnian control grid will use it as a new opportunity to collect information and spy on its subjects. Because Uranus is opposed to Saturn's many restrictions, there will be a great deal of rebellion and the need for independence felt among many people and groups in society. The main objective of the control system is to keep a lid on any serious organized opposition undermining their policies, which will steadily intensify. The control system will promote as much division and disunity as they can get away with in order to minimize opposition. Sovereign nations will become a thing of the past and so will national pride or any form of unity on a large scale. They will use all means at their disposal to restrict Uranus energy from entering human consciousness, preventing it from manifesting in the physical realm. Being the god of the physical realm, Saturn holds all the cards when imposing its will on the rest of us. It is very easy for the established control system to limit our options when it comes to the focal consciousness and to steer us within a narrow band of possibilities. All aspects of modern life under the umbrella of the Saturnian control system will progressively become more restrictive, more frustrating and more organized. They will use all institutions combined to enslave humanity under a new form of restrictive feudalism. There is no greater expression of Saturnian control than the modern airport. Anyone wishing to travel by air must now go through the most rigorous restrictions and control procedures known to man. This is setting a precedent for things to come. Schools have also become indoctrination centers imposing a new belief that safety can only be found behind 12 foot high fences along with restrictions to movement and freedoms. If the control system can get access to the subconscious from a very early age, it will be able to program each generation's beliefs by setting the coordinates during their formative years. As the media pumps out 17 negative stories to every one positive, a natural self-sabotaging mindset is being created 
the monkey mind will promote negative chatter in the minds of many. One objective of the Saturnian control system is to invert beliefs and moral values which were relevant to the Piscean age, inverting Jupiter's attributes in favour of Saturn. A prime example of this would be the social acceptance concerning usury and sodomy, both of which were considered the domain of Saturn throughout the Piscean age. But now, as we move into the Saturnian age, sodomy and usury are both accepted with open arms, and those who oppose them are considered unreasonable. Sodomy being the area of the body associated with the base chakra, ruled by the planet Saturn, those brought up during the Piscean age with a Jupiterian belief system will progressively feel that the world around them is being turned upside down, inverting those optimistic familiarities which they once took for granted. Their spiritual crescent over the cross disposition will become submerged within a cross over the crescent Saturnian materialistic backdrop. Lies will become truths, evil will overshadow good, and fiction will replace fact. Through the subconscious, each individual contributes and influences the collective through their perception of reality. By playing ball with a Saturnian control structure, the human race is breathing life into its existence and strengthening its influence. The 5% focal conscious mind is not capable of rectifying a problem of this magnitude. As all the cards are stacked against it, so it really is a job for the subconscious and the elephant Ganesha. If enough elephants require change, then change will come, not from the control system, but from the collective subconscious within the spirit realm. No problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. Albert Einstein Another important avenue in aligning oneself towards satanic energetic characteristics is through ancient ceremonies and rituals devoted to specific frequencies of Saturn. It may be possible to single out vibrations within Saturn's characteristics for use in one's future aspirations, utilizing rituals at specific times of the year to bring forth and amplify those energies necessary for certain purposes. We can only speculate about the intricacies of these organizations and cults, but we do know they exist as Saturn worship goes back a very long way. It is possible that just like many religious orders, the participants do not fully understand the metaphysical purpose and connection to the planet Saturn, but naively participate anyway. There are many stories and accounts about what takes place at these rituals, but one thing we do know is that many aspects of these rituals, in one way or another, relate to Saturn. The act of sodomizing a child before sacrificing it is one of the worst practices known to man. But if we break it down in order to understand the ceremonial significance to Saturn, it begins to make a little more sense. Any child under the age of seven still has the subconscious fully open. Therefore, they are a powerful conduit to the spirit realm. The act of sodomy is all part of the domain of Saturn, and when the Satanist orgasms into the base chakra of the child, he is essentially opening a portal into the subconscious, and thus the spirit realm. Within the physical collective and low vibrations of the Satanic ritualistic ceremony, he can influence 
the collective subconscious with his perverted intentions, visualizations, and Saturnian thoughts of control. After this has taken place, it is speculated that the child is tortured to death, stimulating massive amounts of natural adrenaline and other chemicals into its bloodstream. When this blood is consumed, it is thought to act as a hallucinogenic stimulant, bringing forth spirits aligned with the ceremony's collective energetic disposition. Just like a genie in a bottle, satanic spirits and entities will congregate stimulating those Saturnian desires, intentions and wishes united within the satanic cult. A society dominated by satanic energetic characteristics will reflect this in their everyday lives. Restrictions and controls will be seen everywhere. Low vibrations of pessimism, fear and misery will infest the nation like a plague, demotivating most within the community. This was the case with the creation of the Soviet Union, a Bolshevik revolution in which the first Soviet government, coincidentally, was 80 to 85 percent Jewish. I thought about something just now. The decision to nationalize this library was made by the first Soviet government, whose composition was 80 to 85 percent Jewish, Vladimir Putin, president of the Russian Federation. If we look at the famous red hammer and sickle used to represent the old communist Soviet Union, we see there is more to it than meets the eye. The hammer is supposed to represent industrial labor, whereas the sickle is for the peasantry. Together they would reflect the socialist alliance between the peasants and the workers. From a metaphysical perspective, the hammer and sickle, just like the glyph for Saturn, is another expression of the cross over the crescent. The color red relating to the base chakra and synonymous with Saturn Satan was adopted as the official representation for this form of restrictive control. During the 70 years of Saturnian communist rule over the Russian people, the Grim Reaper managed to murder millions of men, women and children. Estimates vary from 20 million to 100 million. This form of Saturnian restrictive control is not considered as a favorable way to run society. When trying to answer the question as to who are the main players steering the world towards globalization, one just needs to follow the money. It is only those with the money, the 1% of the 1%, who have the resources to alter policy and bring about change on a massive scale. After the fragmentation of the Holy Roman Empire with the Protestant Revolt, international finance became involved in order to stimulate this new form of breakaway Christianity. They paired up to create Freemasonry and other organizations which promoted anti-Catholicism along with other interests. The United States was created from this new partnership, an expression of materialistic capitalism supported by usury. They eventually took control of the world reserve currency through the US dollar and the ownership of the Federal Reserve. From this base, the globalization project became a real achievable possibility. A global government under one monetary system controlled by them. They just needed to persuade the whole world, especially the Muslims, that their form of money creation was acceptable and for the greater good of all humanity. This could be one reason why the United States is sometimes referred to as the great Satan. We shall have world government whether or not we like it. The question is only whether world government will be achieved by consent or by conquest. James Warburg of the Warburg family banking dynasty February 1950, 
U.S. Senate Committee on Foreign Relations.